Hey crafters, it's Alex Vanover and welcome back to my craft room. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use vinyl to make your own bridal party hangers. So let's get started. I purchased these hangers in the closet aisle of Walmart. And the first thing that I'm gonna do in order to make a vinyl decal for my hanger is I'm actually gonna create a mock-up in Cricut Design Space. So let me show you what I mean. So since getting a template in Design Space that works for this shape and actually helps you get a vinyl decal that's the right shape and size, it's really, really difficult difficult, we're actually going to create a mock-up in Cricut Design Space. So you're going to need a ruler or some kind of stick of measurement, and I'm going to stick that behind the handle of my hanger, and I'm going to lay it out like this. And this is so that when I take the picture, I can mark where the picture is being taken. That way I know what size to make my photo in Cricut Design Space. Then I'm just going to use my iPhone and I'm going to take the picture like this and I'm going to be paying attention to the marks on the ruler here and here and I'm going to take it right about there at the 10 inch mark. And that way when I upload this into Cricut Design Space, I know what size to make the photo so that I can actually have an accurate true to size template of this hanger. And if you decide that you want to do any vinyl decals down the sides of your hanger, so all you need to do is measure the height and the width, and you can put rectangles in Cricut Design Space in order to create text that's the correct size for the sides of your hangers. So the next step is to send your photo to your computer somehow, whether that's through email or Google Drive or however you want to do that. And then now I'm going to show you how to upload it in Cricut Design Space. The next step once you get onto your computer is to actually download that photo from however you sent it to yourself. So that photo should be saved somewhere like in your downloads. And I'm gonna show you how to bring it in as a mock-up. So you're gonna go over here to the upload button and click upload image and then browse. Then you're gonna go to wherever you have it saved on your computer, mine's in my downloads. So I'm gonna click this and select open. Then I'm just gonna choose a random one. So I'm gonna choose moderately complex. That's not really gonna matter when I show you guys here in a second. And this picture is really, really big, but we're not going to erase anything. We're just going to click continue. So then we're going to save this as a print then cut image as it shows here on the left. And I'm going to rename it hanger and then click save. Now this is going to take a while. You'll see this green bar moving across the top for a couple minutes because this is a really large image. So expect this to take a couple of minutes. So then I'm going to click the image I just uploaded and click insert images. And again, this could take a few minutes to upload too, depending on the speed of your computer. So you'll see when the image comes up that it's really, really big. When you look up here at the width and the height, this is huge. And the reason that we put the ruler behind this picture is so that we knew what size to make it. So I'm going to resize the width to be about 10 inches. Now that's not going to be an exact um, width because as you can see we go a little over the 10 inch mark but this is close enough that it's going to make your life a lot easier when it comes to designing your text on a funky shape like this. Now another thing that you'll notice is that my ruler is straight because it is going along these grid lines. Make sure that when you take this photo that your ruler is straight behind your hanger otherwise you can end up skewing your measurements and it's not going to work out quite as well. So next it's time to pick some text and get started on this area right here. I am going to use a script font called Welcome Script. I really, really love this script font because it's pretty and it's elegant, but it's not super thin. Keep in mind that you want to make sure you're not using something that is so thin that it can't be cut in really, really small um, sections because this is going to be a pretty fine detailed script font. So you can see there's definitely some boldness to this font even at a small size. So when you're making a decision, just keep that in mind. I will link this welcome script in the description if you guys want to check this out. It's from a site called Creative Fabrica and I love it. So the next thing I'm going to do is go up here to my letter spacing and make that zero. And then I can still manually adjust all of my letters, but this way I'm getting a little bit closer to making it easier. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock this little lock in the lower left hand corner, and that's going to allow me to stretch my text a little bit to actually fit it to the hanger itself. Now this is pretty close to the sides of the hanger, so I am going to size it down just just a little bit. That way we're not cutting the margins quite that close. 
but that looks about right to me. So then I'm going to ungroup it so I can manually place my letters. Because you'll see when I get in a little bit closer that they're actually not quite connected. And I want to make sure that they're 100% connected before I cut them. So I probably won't connect that R because it's kind of a different script. But I want to make sure that the rest of the letters are fully connected. Then we're going to select everything by holding the shift key and clicking each letter. And then I'm going to click weld. Remember that you always want to weld with script fonts so that you don't have any letters that cut overlapping. So then I want to address if you want to do the sides of your hanger down this way with a date or with somebody's name or something like that. I want to show you how to create a mock-up for that as well. So remember when I told you to measure the height and the width of the skinniest section of your hanger? Well, now you're going to use a rectangle shape from the basic shapes and we're going to create a box the size that you need it so that you can size your text in a way that's going to work well for you. So once you get this square in here you want to click the unlock button again so we can change the proportions and I told you guys that the, at the skinniest point on my hanger my height was going to be half an inch so I'm going to change this to 0 0.5 and I have as much room from side to side pretty much as I need but I'm just going to create a little box like this and this is going to represent the room that you have to work with your text so then I'm going to go over to a text box and I'm going to type in a date. Um, this is my wedding date. I know that this is a couple years ago, but I think it's going to work really, really well. And I'm going to change the font here. So one of the most popular fonts that I have seen for non-script fonts for weddings is a free font called Champagne and Limous in Limousines. It's a really, really easy, um, simple font, and I think it looks really, really elegant on a lot of things. Um, so I highly recommend you guys grab that. I will link it in the description for you. Again, it's free from Devont defont.com um, but it's a really really useful script font to have and I'm also going to make this text white just so you guys can see it a little bit easier so now that I know the room I have to work with I'm going to resize these numbers so that they're going to fit within this box and I'm going to cut it pretty close just because these are really really small letters as it is and I don't want to make them any smaller and risk them not being able to be cut because guys keep in mind that vinyl always has limits of how small it can be cut sometimes when you're looking at a project and it's just too fine you may have to either increase the size or change your font in order to be successful so I don't want to go any smaller than this and if you decide that you wanted to do the opposite side of the hanger down here a little bit lower. Remember that you can always go up to the duplicate button and you can make a second square if you'd like to label another piece of it. So maybe just to keep it even, maybe I'll put um, my new last name on here just to keep it even. So let's do Mrs. Vanover. Whoops, <laughs> I didn't mean to grab that, but that's okay. Now that it's sized, it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to take this and it's already in the champagne and limousines font. I'm going to make it white and resize it down to fit in this box. I have a little more room to move, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And since this is a little bit more spaced out, I kind of like the way that looks along the sides of the hanger. But if you decide that your name is getting too long or whatever, you can always go up to letter spacing and make it shorter. So now that we have everything in place, we need to go ahead and hide all of the pieces that we used as mock-ups. So I'm going to go over here to this little eyeball and I'm just going to check it to make that disappear. And I'm going to do the same thing on both of these squares back here because we no longer need them. So once you have everything in place, you can select make it. And I forgot to say that this is all permanent adhesive vinyl that I'm going to be using on this project. Um, some people will talk about using HTV. I don't really think that that's necessary, but I guess it is an option for you. I just really recommend that you stick with adhesive vinyl because adhesive vinyl is meant for hard surfaces. So ultimately, in my opinion, that's going to give you better results. So that means you don't need to mirror or do anything different than that. You just need to click continue.
So since we're going to be cutting something so small, I'm going to be using StarCraft HD Adhesive Vinyl. That is one of my new favorite vinyls of all time for really, really fine and intricate cuts. So that means that I'm just going to use the vinyl setting. So I'm going to cut out all of my letters and then I'll show you guys how to apply this to So after hand. you cut out your vinyl decal, your next step is going to be to cut apart all of your pieces and weed them and apply transfer tape so we can apply them to the hanger. But before we do that, let me give you some tips on what you need to know. First of all, you want to make sure that you're not using a high tack transfer tape such as Cricut brand transfer tape. It is way too sticky and it's going to be really difficult to apply this to a hanger with a super sticky transfer transfer tape. So I recommend 651 Vinyl's clear medium tag transfer tape just because it's just the right amount of stickiness that it's not going to be really hard to get your vinyl off of the transfer tape and transferred onto the hanger. The second thing that I recommend that you have is either a 651 Vinyl ball like this or a tennis ball and that is going to help you work that vinyl into the wood because it is a little bit textured so it can be a little bit tricky without a secondary tool. Then you can just cut everything apart weed it and apply your transfer tape, and then I'll show you how to apply it to the hanger. So if you guys had a hard time weeding your vinyl, you're gonna notice a major, major difference when you're using high quality vinyl when you're weeding intricate cuts like this versus something like a cheaper vinyl that you got on Amazon that's not any particular brand. So I would just keep that in mind that if you're really struggling to weed some of these projects that you may wanna consider switching your font for future projects or getting a different kind of vinyl or transfer tape because those few factors are gonna make a big, big difference when you're applying this in the final project. So let's go ahead and apply these to our hanger. So we'll start with the bride decal that goes right at the top. So first I'm gonna peel the backing off of the vinyl so that I can see clearly through my transfer tape. And then honestly, I'm just gonna eyeball this in order to apply it to my hanger. Don't worry if it's not absolutely perfect. You can always cut another decal. And if you wanna leave it the way that it is, nobody is ever going to notice. But the things that I'm looking at when I'm trying to place my decal are making sure that I'm getting the text within all the sides and the bottom and making it as centered as I can. Then once I think that looks good, I'm going to kind of put my um, transfer tape in like a horseshoe shape and I'm going to set the middle down first and then one side at a time. So it's going to look kind of like this. And then before I attempt to peel the transfer tape, that's when I'm gonna use my 651 vinyl ball, or if you don't have one of these, a tennis ball will also work in a pinch. And you're just gonna take the ball and actually roll it over top of the vinyl. Whenever you have a textured surface like wood, it can be a little tricky to get vinyl to stick because it's not, um, it's a little bit porous and that makes it hard on the vinyl to adhere. So either a tennis ball or a vinyl ball really helps stick the vinyl onto textures like this. Then once you feel like it's well stuck down, you can also go over it with a squeegee, but don't feel the need to go over it a bunch because that's usually not necessary. Then you can peel back the transfer tape very slowly, making sure you're not pulling anything away and you're done. The first section of our hanger is finished. So then we'll do both of the sides. I think I'm gonna do the longer side over here on the left, and I'm gonna do the date on the right. So with a long name like this, you wanna make sure to get it perfectly straight on the hanger. And one of the best ways to do that is using the hinge method. So in order to do the hinge method, I'm gonna leave the backing on my vinyl, and I'm going to place the decal where I want it. And then I'm gonna kinda use the transfer tape to keep it in place until I can grab my painter's tape. Oh, I can tell it's not straight. 
The only tricky thing about using the hinge method is that obviously you can't see through the backing of the vinyl. So it's a little bit hard to line it up sometimes and make sure that it's perfectly straight. But if you're confident in lining it up, that this does make it way, way easier to ensure that it's straight. So once I feel like that looks good, I'm gonna tentatively stick it down using my transfer tape, and then I'm gonna grab a roll of painter's tape. And I'm just gonna take a long enough piece to put it all the way down the center. Then I'm gonna stick it about halfway through the decal, somewhere like here. And so the way that this is gonna work is that I'm actually gonna peel the transfer tape back on one side, and then I'm going to cut away the backing so that I can start to put the transfer tape down exactly where I want it. So I'm gonna leave that little V there, and I'm gonna cut just right there. It's a little bit tricky to get your scissors in at an angle like this, but I promise it's gonna make your project a lot easier to um, stick it and make it actually straight. So once I'm able to remove the backing, then I can lay the transfer tape down exactly where I want it and start to push it down with my finger. And that sort of creates a hinge for us. So now we can remove the painter's tape. We can peel the rest of the backing back like this and remove it. And then you already have a straight line going for you and you can lay the rest of your decal down like this. And you can smooth it over with your finger. So that's sometimes a lot easier than eyeballing it. Like I said, because this is such a skinny area, it may be a little bit tricky if your vinyl backing's a little uneven like mine, but it's something to consider when doing projects like this. So I'm gonna use the 651 vinyl ball and roll over it again real quick and really push that vinyl into that texture. And then I can remove the backing, or excuse me, I can remove the transfer tape. And then all that's left is the other side. And since this side isn't as long, I think I'm just gonna eyeball placing it to show you guys that approach as well. So to just eyeball it, all I'm gonna do is apply it like a normal vinyl decal. I'm just gonna remove the vinyl's backing, making sure all my little pieces are sticking. And I'm just gonna try to kind of almost center it with my longer name on this side. So I'm gonna place it about there. And then stick it down with my finger before I move to the vinyl ball or the squeegee. And then your hanger is all finished. If you haven't already connected with me on all the social media platforms that you're on, I would love to get to know you. So I'll be sure to put all my social media handles down in the description so that you can find me on every platform that you're on too. You can find me on most platforms as DIY Alex Vanover. And if you're not already a member of my DIY wedding Facebook group, I would love to have you. You can search Cricut Brides and Wedding Crafts on Facebook, and I'll also be sure to put the link in the description so that we're easy to find. We are a group of over five 5,000 DIY brides and other people helping planning a wedding here in the near future. So we offer tons of help, ideas, and inspiration around DIY weddings, and we would love to have you. So make sure that you join us there. And if you haven't already, please click right here to subscribe to DIY Alex. You can scroll down just a little bit and ring the bell right next to the subscribe button. Make sure that you select all notifications from that dropdown so that you never miss a new upload Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern time. I hope we can craft again soon.